was your typical person who had that Lamborghini Countach poster on his wall. And I must admit, I always used to say to myself, how do you get to own one of these cars? My name's Joe Collegio. I'm in steel distribution. I collect muscle cars, motorcycles, and do historic racing. I do love American cars. There's no doubt I just love big V8s. The 66 Corvette was probably the worst possible car anyone could take on as a race car because it scared the hell out of me when I first started driving it in historic cars. I remember three, four years ago when we did Bathurst in Group S, I was that slow, I got warned. But uh, two years ago, I came sixth, so I progressed. A man's got to know his limitations in life. Do I want to win one day? I don't care. I've been able to race in circuits like Goodwood, Circuit Americas, Laguna Seca. I just enjoy the racing. The red Corvette is a 65, 427 big block, Muncie four-speed gearbox, 620 horsepower, probably top speed's about 265. The car was an originally uh, a 327, and we whacked a, a 427 in there about two years ago. It raced in America in the 60s. It then took life going to Europe. There was an English rugby player and he raced it with Peter Brock in Goodwood in the mid-2000, I think, 04, 05 and 06. John really got me in, into the car racing. I think after, you know, 15 years, we're very good friends. We've, we've traveled overseas racing these cars and experienced incredible places. I remember going to Goodwood in 2015 and racing the Corvette. I probably never felt somewhere where I shouldn't have been was there because it was just full on. But John's become a, you know, obviously a very personal friend of mine. You can imagine if you've never raced a, a race car, getting in a, in a big block Corvette, it handled like an absolute pig. I remember JB saying, this thing is gonna kill you. So uh, we did a lot of work and, and trying to, you know, just get it to handle, but it's always been a very difficult car. Like all these American cars, you know, they're not like Porsches, they're, they're great in a straight line, but you really know you're alive when you're going around a corner and, uh, you know, the back's hanging out and then the front wants to go in a, a different direction. When we rebuilt it, we, we try to Im improve it as much as we can, but it is what it is in these cars. You know, you've got to love them to be wanting to drive them. I've been lucky enough to have a couple of bucks, so I think with the racing, you know, I'm 66. It's now on ever to continue doing it. It's just really having the grandkids and uh, and the whole family there. It's, it's just about the fun of them, and, and probably the best part about it is I love going to a racetrack with either motorcycles or cars and letting people jump in them, sit in them. It, it's there to be enjoyed. The car collecting was always there, but I probably really didn't get into it till about 13, 14 years ago. But that part of my life, I had the um, means to do it and just really went quite wild at it, actually. I had to be stopped. We have about 54 motorcycles at the moment. I had a big car collection uh, tuned that down and converted a few of the road cars into race cars, thanks to John Bow. The Cobra was always a car I always dreamt of, of owning one. It's, it's a beautiful car to drive on the road. It's got a, a 289 in there, it's a 63, handles really well. It, it's like an MG with, with steroids. Um, it, that's what it feels like. You've got that big V8, but it can be as sedate and as treacherous and as wild on the road as you want it to be. But when you get into that Corvette, you've got 620 horsepower and she wants to go and that's it. How do you get to where you've got, I, I think it's just a combination of need to be driven. A lot of things have to fall your way. I probably always were possessed to, to get some of these cars and, and to have a good life. I think it's just hard work, a lot of luck, uh, and now just to enjoy your fruits of uh, labour.